bigger than all of us. He's bigger than everyone ever. Alright. Hello everybody. Hello everybody. Welcome to the tour. We're starting a very ambitious project today. And when I say that, I'm being serious, it's very ambitious. This is going to be in the vein of our Payday 2 Death Wish run. We're starting this game from point blank. I want to show you guys really quick. I'm not on my main. I'm in fact on a Smurf account. Just to do this because my main has played a lot of Dead by Daylight. This is from scratch. Never been played before account. Hopefully I haven't checked it too much. but Never been played. I don't think it's been played. Anyways, we're going to go over the basics. This is just going to be a quick stream. Going over the basics, tutorials, th things like that. Like what you need to do to start this game. You're going to notice this when you're logging on. This is really big. At the 13th of every month your rank is reset based on the rank that you got to and we're going to be abusing that a lot during this guide because there are certain things that you need to do that are difficult but they're more difficult when you're at your best rank which most of the time is probably going to be rank one for us it doesn't always have to be for you but it's still the equivalent if rank one is the hardest we're going to get then you can only get to rank 14 that's the equivalent that's your, that's your like highest peak and you need to wait for rank reset to get to like play against some easier people and therefore it's easier to do the achievements. This is also what you're going to see every time you log in, your daily rituals. Uh, you don't really need to try for them all that much. Um, if you happen to be playing people that are like going for it, I, I would suggest if you could to do the survivor ones, they tend to be really easy because you don't have to play specific survivors. The killer ones tend to be harder because you have to play killer and some of them involve morying, which you have to have at or not Adam's offerings in order to do that. It's going to be really hard. This one in particular, if you ever see the initiation, you need to go ahead and scrap that. That one's glitched, and it's very hard to get done. Nurse one. Well, that's not so bad, because we're going to be doing nurse. Anywho. Not right now. But. Not right now. So, when you come to the main menu, there's going to be these four screens. I want to let you know that only these three, you can actually get XP and achievement in. So play as killer, play as survivor, and survive with friends. Survive with friends, we're going to show you a little bit over the course of it, but we're going to try and mostly stay towards the solo survivor just so that we can give you that perspective what you're actually going to be doing survive with friends when it's only two people is not really that much different you only have the communication with your one friend but four man survivor with friends is a completely different game experience yeah, we're probably not going to be playing with we might throw in one or two more of our friends but for the most part it'll either be one or the two of us that's about the extent so just because with three or four people you can really just bully killers and that's just not a yeah. It's not realistic that you're going to have that many people on all the time if you're just going for these achievements and trying to get up in the game. Right. And if you are if you have enough people that you can play survive with friends, you're probably going to be boosting, in which case um, that's, again, a completely different thing that we can't really explain. I've never boosted this game. We're going to be doing this all from the standpoint of actually doing it. We've only ever boosted one achievement, and it was with four friends I just to get the escape of four people. Yeah, I don't even know if that one's called boosted. I'm pretty much, you're almost required to play with friends for that one, so I guess actually we will probably play with friends for that achievement because getting that one with randoms is basically not possible. It is, you could do it, you would probably need to message them prior to the game, and even then, they probably die anyways, so you probably have to do that. There's, that's the one achievement. We'll show you. We're going to go over a little bit, um, see if we can find that one. I can't remember exactly what it's called. I know it's way down here, though. I think it's way down here. It's called Where'd They Go, I believe. Oh, I forgot Milk and Cookies. That's a hilarious achievement. I love that. Um, I went too far. Where'd They Go, I think is what it's called, right? No? Couldn't tell you. Well, fuck. If I can't find it here in a second, then... We uh, may as well just go over all the uh, achievements. No reason to not. Well, I don't want to go over all of them, because we're probably going to go over them more in-depth when we're actually playing the killer. But we will go over... So, the way you got to do this game, in the most like efficient way, which I wish I would have known when I started this game, but I didn't, now I have... To do really shitty stuff I, I don't i still haven't done nurse yeah no. that's just gonna be a shit show yeah. anyways okay so there's achievements that you have to do that are way harder on killer than they are in survivor but 
gonna go ahead and hide that. We don't need to. Th we'll talk about that in our own. Okay, so basically, let's just start. With this is like the first killer, more or less. There's an achievement for every character in the game that uses their personal perks and their personal perks only in order to kill every survivor in the game. Now, there's a couple nuances with that, like things that like void that. Um, if a if a survivor does not load in, you still only need to kill the three. You'll still get the achievement. If a survivor during the game disconnects, you'll still get the achievement. If you use Mori's, you'll still get the achievement. But if they get out of the hatch, you will not. I believe if they bleed out, you still get the achievement. You don't need to hook them or Mori them if they bleed out on the ground if you decide to do... I, well, I guess you couldn't really do a slugging build because you're going to be using your own three personal perks. But there is that. It does The, the achievements themselves are actually like misworded. Um, this one I will show you. Oh, sorry, I keep coming to this and I'm not actually showing anything, but they're going to be like... So see, here's one for survivors. In a public match, escape with Jake using only his three, three unique perks, but they make it sound much harder for killer. In a public match, achieve a merciless victory with the trapper using only his three unique perks. A merciless victory is what is called a double pip in this game. We'll go over that in a little bit. Double pipping is basically like a perfect game, more or less. Um, you don't actually have to do that. The real criteria is getting a 4k 4k we're going to use that term a lot it means to kill all four survivors like i said you don't technically need to get a 4k if if people dc i've had people dc on my achievements it still works um so the thing is is you need to get a killer to level 10 in order to to be able to even do this because you unlock three perks and you can only use these three personal perks here in order to do those now the reason that you do not want to actually start with killer is because as soon as you start playing killer, if you do well at all, I was saying I'm a devotion goals. Couldn't tell you. It's like halfway loaded in my man. whatever. Once you start playing killer, you're gonna start leveling up your killer rank. Now that's a really bad thing that you don't want to do when you're going for these achievements because you want to be playing against the worst survivors possible. I know that's rude to those people that are at rank 20. It's just the truth. So what you want to do is actually start on Survivor and then spend your blood points because blood points are this currency up here. They're used to level up your characters and they're actually for your total account. So if you play the Trapper and you get 30k blood points, you can actually take those blood points and immediately go straight over to your Survivor and you can spend that 30k blood points on Detective Tap here and work on his achievement. That's the easiest way to go about it. Um, but what we're actually going to be doing is we're going to be doing the opposite. We're going to be starting on a survivor, taking all the points we get from them, and putting them on killer. The reason we're doing that is because, as much as people don't want to admit it, survivor is much easier to play without the best perks, and therefore you don't need to spend as much to be able to do as much. So you could play, for example, we're going to be starting as Claudette. You're going to be able to play with her personal perk, self-care, and only self-care, and be able to do decently. Obviously, if you have four perks, you're going to perform better, but you don't need them. So we're going to be starting off with Survivor, plus the rank with Survivor doesn't really matter. The Adept achievements never get really hard. We've even done them at rank one before, and it's still not that hard. It is harder with certain characters that have worse perks. That's a big deal. We do recommend starting on Claudette just because self-care is going to be a huge... I don't want to say clutch. It's going to be a huge help to you learning the game. You can get out of chases and heal yourself. When your teammates don't understand that they need to heal you. Yeah. Um, so, what he means by that is something we haven't gone over. So, each character that you start as, once you reach a certain level, you're actually able to teach the perks that they have, their personal perks, to other people. So, it actually tells you that may be unlocked in the blood web of Claudette Morale from 30 plus. And it actually will, when it says that, it's again kind of misworded. It actually shows up on level 30. Um, and then. You have the choice of taking it or not, and it will just continue to show up continually from that point on. Hey, Killing Serial, what's up, dude? So, you just, like, basically, uh, you have to take the perk or they'll just keep showing up forever. And we just suggest taking all the teachable perks because eventually they will just get to, like, a um, like good state. Like, the worst perk in the game just got reworked into an actually good perk. So that's how you do that. Um, so teachables are really important. The blood web, um, we're gonna kind of have to explain it when we actually do it, but basically You have to level correctly or else you end up wasting a lot of money or blood points, I guess 
And when you do go to the killers, there's actually a specific order of killers we're going to go into because there's a couple things. Certain killers are a lot better than others, and certain killers' perks are a lot better than others, which make it a lot easier to do their thing. For example, the cannibal has one of the best perks in the game called Barbecue and Chili. Actually, the cannibal has three really good perks that make it a lot easier to actually do his achievements. Oh, yeah, no problem. So, there's things like that, and then there's killers that are like Hillbilly that just have a better power than everybody else. He also has good perks, like, for example, well, he has Enduring. Tinkerer is not so bad when you're going through these achievements. But, his power just makes it a lot easier to do. Where you'll have people like, let's say, the pig. Well, actually, I can't use the pig anymore. Her perks are good. Um, let's go ahead. Freddy, yeah, his perks aren't so bad, though, for this. Blood Warden and Remember Me actually make it a lot easier to do. Um, let's go with the, the Wraith. The Wraith has really shitty perks, and is like, I would say a mid to low high tier, if that makes sense, killer. Um, basically, you're going to just be relying on Bloodhound. It's really his only perk that does anything, but it doesn't actually help you win a lot faster. It just helps you track them down. Why does that say you have that unlocked? Um, it's in the shrine. Oh, okay. okay. So, that's what we're going to have a very specific order of who you're spending your points on. We're going to be starting with Nurse, because... No matter if you look up tier list, everyone says Nurse is the best killer in the game. On console, she's nearly impossible to play. So it's very important to do her achievement while you're at rank 20, because even though you're at rank 20, it's still going to be that hard to get the achievement that you really need to make sure to do it first, and then every other character after Nurse will be like a thousand times easier. There's, there's specific ones that are very hard. I would say Huntress is very hard. Hag is very hard. Um, Doctor is not easy. These people are the people that you want to focus on first. Freddy is also probably in there because if you don't have the... You could wait a while and get good add-ons on him, which would make it a ton easier. But if you're doing it with bad add-ons and bad perks, he's going to be very hard to do that achievement with. Um, let's talk about, really quickly, the shrine. We're not going to be using the shrine in our walkthrough at all just because by the time that you guys do these achievements, the shrine will have changed. It changes every week. It has four random perks, two killer and two survivor perks that you can purchase for iridescent shards. You get iridescent shards every time you level up. You get, I, I can't remember exactly how many, but you get so many, and once you get 2,000, you can buy a perk, or 2,700 if it's the first time the perk has ever showed up in the blood web. The reason we're not gonna be abusing this, which is normally this is a really good way to get better perks without having to play the killers, is because like we said, we don't know what the shrine is going to be offering when you guys are playing, so it's unfair to be like, oh wow, Hex Ruin just showed up. There you go. Okay, I think that's most of the basic stuff we needed to go over. Um, I think we can just maybe head into one game. Another reason why you want to start off like doing the hard killers early is because killer at really high ranks, like 20 around that, is much easier to play than survivor. Just because survivors, like you just have to have like a certain number of gain of sense, whereas killer you just kind of, oh I go and I hit people. Uh, but as you go down the ranks, Killer becomes significantly harder than Survivor. Like, it just is it, ramping up. It, it, yeah, it's so, like, I would say it's, like, exponential. Mm -hmm. Like, the higher you go, the harder Killer becomes, and Killer basically requires you to have very specific perks, very specific add-ons, or else you're going to have a very hard time. It's not impossible. I literally 4K'd with Wraith earlier this morning with only Iron Grasp on a bad map against good Survivors, but... I don't know. Well, I basically did scumbag tactics. We'll talk a little bit more about advanced tactics as we play the game, but this guide is mostly for achievement hunters. We're not really making this guide to get you guys to rank 1, or to get you guys to be like a top tier killer, or to get you guys to like do anything but get the achievements. That's why I really want to like talk mostly about what's going to get you the most blood points and what's going to get you those things. Starting with the basics of the game. So here's a little tutorial. Oh, we should have actually done the tutorials yeah, first. We'll do the tutorial right after this. Game. It's okay. That was a mistake. Um, so the 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 point of survivors is there's five there's uh, actually there's eight generators on the map. You need to f completely fix five of them. After fixing five of them, you can open the exit gates. It shows that right there. You have to hold that down. After you do that, you open the gate and you can escape. I thought there were seven things. No, because there's eight. No, yeah, oh, yeah, there's seven. Excuse me. Because, yeah, you're right, because once you get down to having one left, there's only three, which would mean there's seven gens. There, I think there used to be eight. You know you actually used to be able to do generators after you completed the five for more points? Really? Yeah, that's disgusting. Disgusting. Survivors are disgusting. Anyways, 
We're gonna try not. We're gonna try not to get into too much of the, like the. Uh, what what would you call it? I guess. Um, debates about this game, like. I haven't one hundred percent decided if I wanted to use Noed because technically, if you're trying to get the achievements, it's probably a good idea to use Noed because you're going to be getting way more blood points. But then at the same time, when I think about using Decisive on a survivor, I literally get physically ill. But there is a difference. Decisive is a teachable. Noed shows up on everybody, so it's way easier to get Noed. Where it's decisive is balanced now. Soon, soon. Not not while we're making this video, but de Decisive won't be so scumbaggy as we come forward. It's an unbalanced game. Just know that if you get into it, you are probably at some point, almost definitely, going to get messages from people that are angry because it's a multiplayer, but because it's also an unbalanced game, certain things are considered unfair for each to decide to use and do. Okay, I forgot you don't pick it up. So you're gonna want to search chests. You got to search 100 chests for the achievement. You also have to do a lot of generators, but um, these actually make the uh, generators faster to do when you have. Things like this. When you hear a heartbeat, it means a killer is very close to you. And in that case, you need to run. You need to identify places to run. Like, this is actually not a good... Oh, there's a pallet right there. Yep. So... Yeah, uh, I don't know if that's an internet. But it's not a mind gameable pallet. You're going to have to destroy it. I can see him over it. Oh, sorry. Oh, the house. Yeah, the house is... Yeah, so once, when you hear those little sounds, I mean, the skill checks popping up, if you hit it in the white zone, it actually progresses the generator 5%, so it's actually really important. Unfortunately, on console, there's not a lot of people with good connections, so a lot of times you don't end up hitting those grates. I don't even typically go for them a lot of the time, because the amount of times I've went for a grate and then not hit it, it's been too high. Um, if you do mess up a skill check, your generator will explode, giving a noise notification that the killer can now see where you're at. It's actually way easier to explain those things as killer because you see everything. I think I just saw them. So the when you complete a gen, it also uh, shows your location. So as you see, you'll get your your rank is based on four different things in this game. It's called boldness, um, objective, uh, survival, and altruism. Oh uh, yeah, boldness is chaser. But uh, no, well, it's really called chaser. But anyways, the you have to do all four of those things so well in order to like level up your character, not level up your character, but level up your um, survivor rank. So technically, if you didn't want to do that, you could do, just do really shitty, and for certain achievements, you might want to do that. For example, the one like Kobe 50 times off the hook. You could literally just make sure some survivor goes down, unhook him, then just run at the killer. Then get off the hook, die, and restart. That's the fastest way to do that achievement, if you really just want that achievement, which we might even suggest doing. Deliverance. Yeah, just wait for a survivor, unhook him, then immediately, like... Deliver, you know, run at the killer, down, get down, deliverance off, and just die. You know, we'll talk about which perks help with which achievements as we get to those. Yeah, a lot of the perks in this game are actually tied directly to an achievement, which makes them a lot easier. As you can see, this is what I'm talking about. Um, so you need to get five generators done. I've gotten that one generator done, and I'm about to get a second, and no one else is done. Any. Okay, so you might be wondering why I'm not using the toolbox. The toolboxes have so many charges on them. After they have no more charges left, you lose them. Now, if you escape with the item you're carrying, it completely refills its health bar, basically. So if I escape with this toolbox, I'll basically have a full toolbox again. It's how you can kind of go through the game using your favorite items all the time, as long as you don't die. Again, search as many chests as possible. You need to search 100. If you die, you instantly lose. Yes, there's an exception to that. We'll talk about that later because it's kind of a niche case. We won't use it all too much. That guy killed himself on the hook. Um, I'm going to guess he tried to uh, escape. And you do not want to do that. You have only a 4% chance of escaping when you try to escape without uh, the perks to help you do it. If the game doesn't really tell you that you have next to no chance of escaping, so 
So you'll see that a lot. You'll see a lot of these ranks where people like kill themselves because they don't understand how it works. Yeah, you never really want to attempt escape unless you're going for the achievement or you have deliverance and your deliverance is stacked. I believe that guy just ran right there. I don't know why I can't hear her lullaby at all though. There's literally a thing then right next to me, but she's not taking it yet. Okay, this push is Hey, Thingman, how about you help me out? Um, lockers are scattered around the map. You can hide in them if you want. I do not suggest it at all. You are instantly downed if you are grabbed out of a locker. Okay, we're going to go for this milk and cookies right here. There's an achievement called milk and cookies for... Um, yeah. Still going to do it. Um, she just has a uh, perk that allows her to see what people go through the face. And she's probably running it because she's low level and... That's probably the only perk she has. Anyways, Milk and Cookies requires you to loot this chest, I believe, 20 times. The one in the basement. So, there you go. I looted it. Eh, that's a flashlight. I don't want it. She's on her way. She's right above you. I don't know about that. Cleansing dull totems is kind of important. Um, there's a perk called Noed that you want to get rid of dull totems, but you actually need to cleanse, I believe. There she is. I think you need to cleanse 10 of... <laughs> Ten of the uh, hex totems, in order to. I really can't hear her shit at all. The only problem is I need to get out of this chase because no one's gonna be doing generators. Why can I not hear her at all? Oh shit! Oh. That was almost a smack in the ass. It's really important that you watch the killer, like you kind of learn how you watch them because you don't know. Can't hear What I just did was toxic. Close to me, We'll be trying to fix the game audio shortly after this. Hearing is really important. Yes, hearing is like more important in this game than like any other game I've played. I need to get this gen done because I do not believe my teammates are going to go. God damn it. There's, all, there's two gen. That was actually really smart of her to get those hatches back because I know she used a lot on me. Yeah, I may have fucked this map up because there are two generators very close to each other. They're right next to Oh, there's a third one. You have to get one of these three done. Where's the third one? Right there. Well, I knew that one, but isn't this the other one? I think there's one in the house still. Okay. Fuck. Oh, there's still the one in the house. There's still the one in the house. The house, the one in the house is actually an achievement generator. Let's see if we can get that one. Has been started. So wow, it had been started like 0.1%. Who the fuck started this gen? Like, just a little bit. Oh, God damn it, Huntress. My audio is... My audio is all fucked up on this game. Oh, shit. Okay, there's an achievement for fixing, I think... 25 or 50 generators that have been kicked by the killer. And that means fully repairing them, not just getting them out of the broken state. I'm proud that she knows how to kick the generator, though. So that's really good. It teaches you that much tutorial. Wow, I did not know that. 
I cannot hear her lullaby or her heartbeat at all. So these achievement generators, not only do you have to fix them, you also have to escape. If you do not escape, you don't get the achievement. Not too bad, most of the time. The game one, very hard to do. I feel bad about looping my killer right there. Oh yeah, um, something that a lot of people didn't know, or don't know, like my friend didn't know. Killers are faster than you, even the slowest killers are faster than you, minus the nurse, who's the only exception. What the? They're just watching. Anyways, so running in a straight line is not what you ever want to do, because the killer will always catch you. You want to find things like, you saw him vaulting things. You want to find windows to vault. Pallets you can drop directly on the killer to start him. She probably has no head. It's just like she knows I'm here. You have to open so many doors, so you really want to try and get one to open the door. That's not good. Might be okay because she might be just camping the door. Probably is. Okay. Nice We're just gonna leave. You do get there is a I think an achievement for escaping through the hatch for the first time. It doesn't matter. I'm just gonna take the gate. So that was like a super good game for us. You get like five thousand extra blood points for escaping. Our teammates literally did dog shit that game though. Yep, survival treasures. Yep, I brought a new item. As you saw I got it from a chest. I did a daily too for doing three generators. I did that in one match. <laughs> I did four generators that game, four, <laughs> four of the five. Uh, wow, and then see, this is your pip system. Yeah, I don't know what that Devlin is. one is your altruism, which is like unhooking and healing. Lightbringer is doing generators, obviously. Vader is chases and staying hidden. There's that one, I uh, repaired the generator in the family residence and lived telltale. None of my teammates did. What's that other one? This one, it's for, uh, oh, it's, yeah, it's, you're, basically, you gotta survive. You only get a near death if you were never hit, and, escape. Oh, I'm sorry, without being down. Yeah. I thought it was like, without being hit. I, I actually believe it did use it without being hit. I think you can get hurt. Like, I think you can get hit and still get near death, but it does lower it. If you get hit too many times, I don't think you can. Okay, so we got 43k blood points. We did forget, though, we're gonna quickly just... I don't know if we have time. No, we should have time. We'll be fine. Oops, ship. I was trying to click on daily rituals. I clicked on survive with friends. Awkward. Yeah, killing shield. This is the dead by daylight we were talking about. It's actually way cooler when you're a killer, in my opinion. We decided we're going to do a uh, full-on guide for this in the like sense that we did. We did payday too back in the day. We did like this really, really um, complex guide. Which, we got a lot of, um, likes for it on, uh, True Achievements, but then they changed the game, so, you know. And you get a bunch of blood points for doing these, so we're gonna do both of them. You get a blood, uh, a bunch on your first try of them, or first, like, completion. I think it's, like, 25,000 each, so it's, like, 50,000. So we'll get a nice, like, good chunk of blood points to start the game off, which will be really nice. Hopefully enough to get uh, Nurse to level 10. They're going to be doing Nurse first. Nurse is going to suck ass. Okay. Okay. That was my wonderful girlfriend, Megan. Okay, so one thing you got to know. So, if you just tap the right trigger, you slash at him like this. If you hold it down, you'll lunge. You get, excuse me, a slight speed increase. And you move, and it's a little bit longer of a hitbox. When they're down, hook them. It's all very basic stuff. We'll kind of go through most most of the tutorial. Works, so we're just gonna go through end game. But it's very basic. It's pretty hard. It's pretty hard to not understand, I guess. Yep. 
go and see where the survivor is. I think they're over here, right? Oh no. Dropping pallets is actually really good for the uh killer. It's good for uh... Yeah, it's good for both. If you're a survivor and you drop the pallet, especially if you actually stun the killer, it's really good because he can't move. If the killer does not stop it. The one thing that you gotta know is a lot of survivors at low ranks, they think once they stun the killer, that's when they should run away. It's actually once the killer starts to break the pallet that you want to start running away, and not before that, because pallets are like safe havens. There's a couple differences with that. If the uh, pallet's an unsafe pallet, you won't do that. Also, if you find out that the killer has brutal strength, you will also not want to wait at the pallet. There's a grab, wow. That is a grab, yeah. You also kick the generator. When you kick the generator, it goes down 1% every 4 seconds. So it's, it's really, it's really sad how bad it deep progresses. It takes 80 seconds to do a What the heck? They open the exit gates. And I believe it's... 360 seconds for a generator fully to regress if it is at full. I think it's five minutes. That's 300 seconds, right? I'm pretty sure it's five minutes to fully regress. But I could be wrong. The whole point of it is, it takes a lot longer to regress than it does to actually just do the gen. Which is why, uh, you should, you should always kick them. Like, It's hard to say, but, so, okay, a lot of times when you start a chase, if you find someone near a generator and you hit them, a lot of times you're going to want to kick the generator while you're going on the chase, because then that whole time you're chasing them, you actually um, have that generator deep progressing. Whereas if you don't, and you lose them, then you not only got your, you didn't get your down, but you also didn't stop their momentum. You're kind of like lowering their momentum when you kick the generator. It also, um... Provides you with inf information because a regressing generator will shoot out sparks out of it, and if they touch it for even half a second, it won't spark anymore. So you will instantly know if the generator you have kicked has been worked on again. Exactly. Yeah. Some very basic stuff. You already saw all this. Oh. Oh. Why, God? We haven't had this happen in a long time. You might need to mute this. Okay. At least see how, how loud it's picking this up. Oh! Is it done? Is it fucking done? God, I was hoping he'd just trash that car somehow. God, I really hope so. Alright, go back to the mixer then. I think it actually forced me to fail that one. Sorry, Killing Zero, that we're not being so interactive. We're actually making this for YouTube, so... That's why we're kind of like having a different format to our stream today, where it's more like informative. Less like casual, They're usually really casual. Okay. Oh, on the other side.
just a brief moment. Because I'm sure it's gonna start again. I can smell the asshole. Oh, nope, that's just Kenny. Fuck this, I'm gonna do that. Bad. Fix the audio. I mean the options menu. I know, but I'm pretty sure it's just all at 100. percent No. Why is this at 80? Oh. Also, not on headphones. More speakers. We will probably put on headphones at some point. Most of the time. when we get to higher ranks. Because hearing is so important in this game. Okay, so we have 93k blood points from doing that. We're going to go ahead and put it all into the nurse. So this is how the blood web works. Oh my god, Strider Tier 2, that's hilarious. Okay, so you take... This is... <laughs> the easiest way to explain it is everything that you buy from this is something that you can use on the killer. It all takes a certain amount of blood points. Browns always cost 3,000. And then yellows are always 4,000. You always want to be getting a perk on every blood web all the time. These first 10 blood webs require you to buy everything. So there's not a real lot of thought to it. Just buy everything you can. Oh, Iron Draft. Hello. You have to buy 100 of those mystery boxes for an achievement. They just randomly show up. Do not go for them. You don't need to. You'll, you'll just get it without even trying. Two RNGs. Yep. See, this is kind of bad. You actually don't want to get a lot of like rare shit on these early blood webs because you just want to get through them really fast, so and you're forced to buy them. Hey, that's one of the left best on the game. Yep, I have one addition from chain blank for no downsides. Okay. Yeah, now these part. God, people. All right. So we got really close. Ooh, Bitter Murmur is actually a good bird. Okay. So with that shit that we just got, you can come here. You can notice we hit level 5, so we get two perks. As we said, we're going to go for this achievement first. So we're going to put on the perks that we can. Um, this offering is really important. So every single game, you need to put on an offering because it's used as soon as you get into the loading screen. That means even if you DC after the loading screen, you still use your offering. It's really important to always use one. Um, even if you don't have anything good, like for example, I have no really good offerings right now. Um, we don't want to think in the dark minutes. We're probably just going to end up using the hunting. If you think you're not very good with someone, it's almost always worth it to go with, with the hunting one because you're going to get the most points out of hunting. Add-ons are really important for killers. It's way more important to have add-ons on killers than it is on survivors. It changes the game a lot. Um, we're not actually going to be using good ones. Uh, if we were, we'd be using like Fragile Weeds. That's one of our best add-ons. The other one's that like pinecone looking one. Makes it so you can chain really far. Uh, don't want to use that because I don't know the charge speed, so it's just going to make it harder. Slightly increases the chain blink window. I don't know what that means. That means that your second blink can be charged up longer. Ooh, that actually might be nice. I might use that. Slightly increases the maximum range, slightly decreases the accuracy. No thank you. Wow, this adds one additional chain blink that's just torn fucking bookmark. Reduces the maximum blink range and reduces the blink window. Yikes. Slightly increases the charge speed. So we're gonna go with matchbox. Spoon. Yeah, let's just go with spoon. Okay. Um, we're not actually going to play her, because we still got to get three more levels. So we're going to go back into the survivor game one more time, before we get started on Nurse. Um, we actually got lucky to actually have a Nurse daily, too. Which, I don't know if that's lucky or not, but we'll get to it. Um, one more thing I want to talk about is, we will always tell you what is, like, the best loadout out of what we have. This is obviously personal opinion, what we think. But, you're probably wondering, why did I put on these two when I actually got Strider, which is one of her personal perks, level 2. Well, it's because out of her personal perks, every killer's perks are not equal in terms of how good they are. Nurse really only has one very good perk, and that'd be Nurse's Calling. So if I were only to be running one perk, I'd be running Nurse's Calling. Her next best, 
next best perk is Thanatophobia, which most people say is bad, and I would agree it's not very good. It's only really good on a character named Legion, and on him I would say it's very good. Not even mandatory though, you'd probably still be better off running something like Ruin. And Strider is her worst perk. Again, it's really only good on two people. It's pretty much good on Legion and um, the Spirit. The spirit yeah. Because the Spirit, it's more or less training wheels. For her. Let's go back to our survivor. Now, you'll see that I have the worn out tools. If you do not want to use your tools, you can just go ahead and click on it. This is basically the same as the killer's power. Survivors don't have powers, what they have is items. They still have add-ons for those items. I don't have any because I haven't leveled. You don't really need items to do well. Um, in fact, you can win without items most of the time. They have offerings just like killers. Theirs are a little different though, obviously. They don't help kill the survivors. They help normally like disrupt the killer or give you more blood points or something like that. They have the same thing that they have with blood web. You can look at Claudette's. Uh, kind of shit perk, but it's alright. Um, I think that's about all we need to go over with items. There are a lot of achievements that have to do with items. Mostly picking them up or picking up a, someone else's item. Let's go ahead and get into one more game. Let's, we're probably going to do one more and then... Ooh, actually, maybe not. We have like 10 minutes left. They're not home yet. You're good. Yeah, but he's going to want to leave as soon as we get home, so... That's what I'm thinking. Of course, nobody does generators, so that's not, not ideal. Hey, we got two people with toolboxes. Maybe we'll do generators this time. Um, I think that's all we need to go over. Pretty sure. Oh, yes. Yeah, so, so survivors are basically skins. They have actually no difference between survivors other than their perks. Once you get those perks, though, teachable. Technically, you could choose whoever you wanted. If you wanted to play Dwight, you could play Dwight every game because... They don't have differences. Killers are very different in the way that they play and the powers that they have. Oh, we're facing the Doctor. Yeah, we're probably going to lose this game. I'm not going to lie to you. Pretty hard. Doctors tend to really fuck on new players because of the mechanics that the Doctor has and players not understanding how to play against him. We will try and teach you guys how to play against each killer. Again, we're not professionals, though. We're only standard rank one players, so we have our knowledge from playing the game. We don't have a crazy amount of, like, 3,000 hours in this game like a lot of the streamers do that play this game, you know, day in, day out. But we'll try to help you with a little bit of tips we can. Again, this is more focused on achievements, though, and less focused on, like, being the best survivor out there or being the best killer out there. These are just things that are going to suffice for you as an achievement hunter to get these achievements. And you made sure that we're unmuted now, right? I don't yeah, want to... That would make me really are sad are if we, unmuted. like, got all the way through this and then somehow forgot to unmute after Kenny did shit with his car. Yeah, no, I, I unmuted and then I watched it to make sure the black mic was working. We're good. Oh, man. That sounded like it hurt a little bit, actually. Yeah, that, the second one did. Okay, Mount Ormond Resort. We got lucky. This is actually another map with an achievement generator. Uh, it's going to really suck to get, though, because Doctor is going to probably be around the middle of the map. We're not going to go for it right away. We have a generator right here. This is a really unsafe generator if you don't have a perk called Balanced Landing, so I kind of want to get it out of the way if I can. I see that there's a pallet in front of me. There's also what appears to be a jungle gem. Oh, there's a pallet. So there's a jungle gem to my right as well. So, the doctor, when he gets close enough to you, puts you into madness. That's unavoidable unless you're inside of a locker. Do not suggest hiding in the locker. It gives him a noise notification, which is why he tends to fuck on people, because he finds you very quickly. And then he can start the chase. Now, Doctor's actually not that good of a killer. Um, he just tends to fuck on new people because the madder you get, the more your character screams, and therefore the more he knows where you're at. And if you're in Madness Tier 3, you're forced to snap out of it until you can... Until you snap out of it, you can't do anything like heal yourself. You can't work on generators. You can basically only get people off of hooks if you're in Madness Tier 3. Plus, you also scream a lot, and the Doctor knows where you're at due to his Doctor illusions. Every time, like, you saw those little notifications on his screen, every time somebody screams, he gets those exact same notifications. As you see, he already got somebody down, so. Yeah. I don't think he did. That guy got hit already. Yeah, he's got Ooh. Unideal. But what is ideal is our teammates are rushing generators, so we're going to get two in the time that he got one hook. Which is actually surprisingly still a good trade for the killer. 
Um, I, if he doesn't have ruin, he doesn't have ruin, so that's pretty much what you're gonna get a lot of the times. Um, we don't know if he's actually shocking him, that guy or if that's the first time that person got seen. We're gonna go for this unhook though. See what we can do. This guy is apparently attempting escape. Doctor is right there. Yeah. He farmed that guy, folks. Okay, we're probably not gonna be able to get the achievement generator this time, mostly because uh, we're not gonna probably. I don't think we're gonna survive this game, to be honest. We're gonna try as best as we can, but I don't think we're getting out of this game. This guy probably will not know how to struggle. Let's see if I can get him. What you saw right there, that guy unhooked with the doctor really close. That's called farming your teammates. It basically just he's, kills them. Yeah, and that's he's, he's gonna do it again. Um, it looks as though as if they're okay though. Oh, oh borrowed yeah, time. It borrowed time. That must have been a different guy then. It was. For sure. So borrowed time. Um, when you unhook somebody, if they get hit, they don't go down. They gain a borrowed time timer. Um, I don't know how to explain that perk. Uh, killers think it's kind of toxic, and then survivors think that it's necessary for killers that face camp. I would agree with both sides. I'm gonna probably scream here soon because I'm pretty close to the doctor. Depends. He's probably in the wrong mode though. He's probably in the wrong mode. Let's see what we can do here. I'd like to get this generator done prior to getting it. That guy just. Well, he's, he started mending, but it appeared that uh, he was mending right next to where Doctor was. Yeah. Now, this guy's actually smart. If he picks up that guy, I could go for the unhook right away, but he's actually slugging him right there. Madness tier 1, which is kind of good. Madness tier 2 is when you start screaming a lot. Madness tier 1 is basically just to scuff you for the first time. That guy's dead on hook. No point to, to go anywhere near him. We could take a hit for him, which you need to do, I think, 25 times for an achievement, but not worth. That guy's horrible. He's dead already. He's not going to get on hook, so. It's not necessarily his fault. That's more teammates. Teammates did farm him, but he did go down quite quick. This is the achievement generator. I don't see it happening. I... I don't even see very many pallets. I see. Uh, in fact, I see no pallets next to Pretty bad. Oh. Uh, this, this teammate understands this game a little bit because he came to me and wanted to deal. Very soon. Needs the madness box on the right there. There's no god pallets up here. When you see, so you want to be really time efficient in this game, so as soon as you see the killer going after someone else, keep working on a generator. Unless you're injured, then you should heal yourself, but otherwise you want to just take advantage of any time that the killer is not fucking on you to go ahead and fuck on him, I guess, basically. These guys are going down for it. Uh, yeah. The doctor, there's no way to reduce any madness tier besides tier 3. Tier 2, you're stuck in tier 1. Yeah, the only, it will decrease over time, so if you get out of tier 3, you're going to be like at max tier 2, basically. He's coming right here. Oh, yeah. Probably got power up here. He thought I was going for that guy. No, so our teammate did really big then I can probably get this achievement generator. Let's see. If we're gonna escape, I really would like to get this achievement. If 
probably what's gonna happen is I'm gonna get really close and I'm gonna show up and then someone else is gonna finish the generator and I'm gonna be sad, sad, sad. Wow, that guy got grabbed out of a locker, didn't he? Yeah, yes. Don't hide in lockers. It's not a good idea. As you can see, this is a big door, and he's still grabbing people out of lockers. It's really easy to tell because when you run, you leave tracks for the killer to see really easily. Like really. Oh, there's easy. the hatch. Yep, that's a good thing to keep in mind for your achievement. Now, I see one generator here, but it's kind of close to the killer. I want to know if. There's any generators not near him. Oh, that's fat shaming if I've ever seen it. Okay, they got him off. Let's let's just start this generator. No one. So I thought this game was gonna go better because a teammate did one generator, but now that I'm on my fourth generator, I realize it's going about the same as the first game where I did four. And these guys just do not know how to do generators. This is kind of normal when you're at low levels in this game, though. People tend to just be scared of killers, especially the doctor, that they just run away a lot of the time. And like I, you saw, they just hide in lockers because they don't know what they're doing. As you can see, they're, like, this game, they are staying alive a little bit better and keeping each other alive a little bit better, besides the first person. That was a doctor illusion, you probably saw that, it looked really freaky. The doctor can see those anywhere on the map, and they always look at where you were when they appeared. That's how he also finds that. Yeah, so doctor, doctor is really only good for one thing, and it's called tracking, which honestly, when you start this game, that's mostly what you need help with. So doctor's are kind of a noob-friendly killer. That's why you see him a lot at low ranks, and I, I almost feel like he's gatekeeping because survivors are so bad at dealing with him at low levels that he tends to really fuck on new players. I keep thinking I'm hearing his heartbeat. Oh, I can just go later. Oh, I can just go by myself. Where's it? Exit's over there. Now, the, the question is, does this guy have no ed? I don't... No ed as a perk. Uh, when all the generators are powered, it gives the killer extra movement speed, and he instantly downs when he hits them. You don't get two hits, and you get one. Hold that right here. Yes, he does. No. He no. doesn't. That guy was guy doing that? He would have gotten off his shoulders like eight times right now. What a weirdo. So this is what self-care is. You can heal yourself when you're injured. Oh, that's too bad. Doesn't really matter. This guy can't kill me anymore. Yep. If you stand right next to it, you actually get knocked and the momentum carries you out of the gate. That's actually an achievement for going escaping while down, but I don't think it counts like that. Oh. Well, that might be that. Unforgettable getaway. No, yeah, prepare the generator in the show and leave the tail to drop. Nice. Wow, you get just piss poor. Um, Ag oh, agonizing escape. There, there you go. go. Crawl your way out. There you go. Shit, I'm pipping way too much. It doesn't really matter what you pip as a survivor. Yeah, Once as you, you can see, this guy's really low level. This guy, on the other hand, is definitely D ranking. On purpose. What the hell? He's a guest. He's a guest account. Oh. They must have gotten separated in the matchmaker. What the fuck? I have no idea Either how that, that works. Or he signed in as a guest account to play on a rank 20 and probably has all, all the, the perks. perks. Yeah, that's really that's weird. That's fucked up. That needs to get fixed right now. I don't know if that actually works like that. But if that's it does, saying. that's one of the most toxic things. Unfortunate. We got less than a level off of our survivor. Anyways, that's our first part of our Dead by Daylight walkthrough. We'll be back, hopefully later. Maybe not later today, but later soon. And we'll go a little bit farther, hopefully get to our nurse. But good luck, have fun, don't get lost, guys. We'll see you out there.